in the beginning, 25 million years ago, <laughs> the pre-Cambric era of the soundtrack of our lives, which was Union Carbide Productions, uh, started in 86 as a reaction to the 80s, I think, uh, because we were kind of fed up in a way. We were like 20 years old and we wanted to make something new. And we did for seven years, and then we split up. We made four albums, uh, toured quite successfully in Germany and the States, but we, we kind of faded out or weeded out or, I don't know, <laughs> exploded, I think. You know, we split up in 93, and uh, maybe because of the grunge or whatever. Well, I was producing different bands, and then we were asked to uh, do uh, some music for, I think it was a ski movie, uh, like downhill performance stuff. And we were asked to do the soundtrack to that movie, which we did, and that was like the embryo for a soundtrack of life. And there were me and the guitar players from Union Carbide, or two of them anyway. Uh, and people from Whipped Cream, from Electric Eskimos, and the Newfoundland Noodlers, because they split up and then we formed the soundtrack of our lives straight after doing that m film music. The idea was actually to make a box set of songs, you know, like 40 songs. So we kind of recorded 40 songs and uh, just, you know, because it was the time when they started to release box sets on CD. So we thought that was a good idea to, you know, fuck people, people's minds up because nobody knew who we were, but we were like pretending that we've been around for 25 years. That was the idea, but we couldn't do it because the record company didn't, couldn't afford it or whatever. Uh, so it became the first and the second album. Somebody asked me questions about the past and, well, might as well do a song from the past. It's called Golden Age. <laughs> For the future. Well, it was not really planned as, you know, to form another group, but uh, we realized that we, we, you know, we gave it a try to. Uh, to get together because we knew each other a little bit. We knew we were, you know, pretty good players or, or, or um, and it seemed quite interesting because of Frederick, he was the drummer and everybody said to him, don't play with these guys, you know, they, they're not gonna last, it's, they're idiots, you know, don't do it. So, and he came from Whipped Cream, which was a pretty, you know, for a while a good band, but then yeah, he, he left and, uh, and so it kind of took form in 95 uh, and the process, it went very fast through the songwriting process. Uh, and yeah, there were some really great ideas. Uh, and for me, it seems like, okay, let's form a band that is like, you put everything you like, you know, that you ever liked in your life. And, and, and make a new band and make the music that, you know, is missing. And, you know, put it all together and, and uh, like, a, you know, the last great rock and roll band on earth, you know. So that, that was the idea and uh, I think that idea is fulfilled <laughs> right now. And all your children are laughing when you say you're gonna rise above. 
And there's no use asking when you've got your memories to dwell up on. It doesn't matter to me. In some sort of sense, we never got the, this big hype which had, could, you know, destroy the band. It never happened. Yeah. Because we never, and the intention, I don't know, the intention was to make all these albums and, and you know, keep it real as a group, not to, you know, make one album and then just do shit albums, you know, like most bands do. They kind of, they are successful and then they're, you know, in the hype and then they forget about the music. It's been a really good trip, you know, we, we, we've been everywhere in this world. So, so, and, and uh, we made five, seven magnificent albums, which is an entity in itself as a whole. You know, it's, it's, uh, now it's supposed to live its own life and people can discover it. Life has been good to us as, as a band. And, and also that, I think being from Sweden, you know, people, I don't know, they probably think that's kind of strange. It's kind of exotic in a way, but it's strange. So it's not like if we were, have, would have been English or, you know, American or whatever, it would have been this national thing. Oh, we are the new Beatles. But, well, okay, well, what are we, the, the new ABBA? <laughs> I don't know, maybe we are. <laughs> Skull. I think all artists nowadays, they start their own label, they want to own their own music because there's no point having a record company and the record companies are very soon gone. So we didn't really, we just said, okay, what do you want to do? They want to do, of, of course, a compilation album and, you know, a song that they wanted to release for a couple of years called Carmageddon and they did. So that was like a goodbye to Warner, uh, and then we 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 made this one at EMI Parlophone, which you know won't be around for too long as well. But it was EMI Parlophone, <laughs> which you know it looks good. So so whatever. But at the same time, we have small labels working with small labels and. Working with people that loves your band, that's, that's, that's the main thing, you know, it doesn't matter if they're on, well, it's good, if, it's good if they are on big labels, but not very often, you know, that does not really happen that often nowadays. But it's just, you should work with your fans, you know, that, that's, that's the only thing. Well, I think we always had creative control. That, that was the most important thing. We always decided what to do you know, everything, cover, art, or everything. But I think it's more like the communication, if you, if you can com communicate with somebody who's into your music, who does understand and can transform your ideas, you know, the way you want them, then it's great. But uh, mostly all those big labels, they're more like into selling, you know, or, or not really, give a shit about the music, you know. So what now, my little blue-eyed son? What can I do to turn you on? Recorded history, repeat under To find new ways to own we were not talking about it. We, we even said like we're not going to say anything. We we're just going to quit. But but then we thought, oh, might as well just tell people this is the last album. So so uh, I don't know. So, so. <laughs> but we don't we don't. I don't want to write anybody uh, on their nose. You know, it's it was not made in that sense. You know, okay, now we're going to do the last album and every song is going to be goodbye. It's, it's not. It's like two or three songs that there are. 
has that kind of vibe to it. But, but we, we just felt like this is what was actually the missing stone of what we had done before. Because I think Communion was such a great album. It could have been an, a great end as well, but it kind of, there was something missing and that was throw it to the universe, which it's kind of a, it feels like that's an amplifier for the, all the uh, other albums. You know, it, 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 it's, it connects all the albums in a way, if you really want to dig into it. For me personally, it does. It, it's like writing a book or it's, you know, apart from a film that's missing and, and, you, and you make it and it works. We, we, we could have called it Origin 2, but the songs that were supposed to be in or on Origin 2 are on this album and on Communion as well. For instance, What's Your Story? You Are the Beginning, uh, If Nothing Lasts Forever. They, they were supposed to be on, on uh, Origin 2. These were the songs that we kind of put aside. Uh, and they were all, most of them were already made, you know, maybe two thirds were songs that we, you know, we, we didn't release them. We just felt like, no, this is not the time to release this song or that song or, you know, so we kind of waited and stalled and, and, uh, and uh, now it felt like, oh, this is the time. Now it's time for these songs to be, you know, to finish them. So it was more like a finishing project with you know writing the lyrics and and uh, doing the arrangement and the production and, and some overdubs but mo most it was not it was never any session we had one session but uh, the whole album is not a session at all it's it's just you know excerpts from different eras so it's like it's really a mix between everything Everything just fell into place and it made, made sense. It was a great feeling. It's one of the best experiences ever, you know, in, in my history of recording, you know, recording albums. That, that was one of the best experiences, making this album and, and communion. <laughs> okay. We are the poor. 